Okay, here we are, part two of the sit stand mechanical man build, 3D printed. We're going to uh, do some assembly bits on the body before we can attach it to the leg unit that we made earlier. Here is the uh, completed guy. Let's get him out of the way. We'll bring the leg unit back up that we assembled in, in part one. Uh, basically, we need to start with the arms. I decided the arms would look better if they were dimensional on both sides rather than one. Originally, still haven't done any cleanup on this, so there's a little bit of stuff that needs to be cleaned up. Originally, I was just going to do the, an arm like that, a flat one, where it only looked good from one side, and so I actually have the mounting hole, and you could still do that. You could still do a one arm one if you want to make it a little bit lighter. Then I went ahead and designed the left side, and the idea is these both print laying flat, no supports required, but you do have to then glue them together. So we're going to glue those together first, so they'll have a couple of seconds to set up before we attempt to put them on. I'm going to be using the Weld On number 16, because it melts and fuses PLA together like nobody's business. And it's much cheaper than uh, glues that are sold specifically for PLA gluing. And much better than super glues because super glues are just a surface adhesive. They don't actually melt or fuse anything together, which means they like to fall apart at some point. Just a matter of time and temperature. So we get these two lined up. We use some clothes pins here. Apply some pressure. And we'll let we're gonna let that guy set while we look at the other one. So then there are these arm axles, and they print without supports, as you see it flat on the bed like that. And this one is exactly the same, except I took a number two machine thread screw and screwed it in to this little hole that has a recessed top right there and like that and the idea is this is going to become a lever for moving the one arm that raises when the robot goes up one side doesn't need it one side does it's the robot's right hand which lifts so this side will have that and the robot's left side doesn't need it I wish I remembered, <laughs> actually I've only built the one prototype, I wish I remembered for sure this is going to go from from the inside to there, just kind of sits inside the body. Maybe we should talk about the body here for a second before I start assembling stuff on it. The body prints vertically like this, but I do run a support column only in the center to support this. So about the width of your finger, you run a support column. In my case, I use the, the Prusa slicer, and it has uh, where you can tell it where to enforce support. So I build up the block saying support here and don't support anything else, because everything else about the body has been designed to print without supports. Okay. So what I was going to say is, I'm not 100% sure on this hexon shaft that I have for aligning things what position I used in that prototype one. I'm pretty sure that's not it. I think it's this one. I'm going to go ahead and glue this in the hopes that I'm right. Now, when we put the glue this on, we don't want the PLA sticking to here. So I'm going to try to put the glue deep down inside there so when these two push together it stays without gluing both of them up. And then once this is on here I'm going to show you the position that I put the inside cam at. Just in case I happen to remember right. Just in case it's right. You know the good news is, is if I'm wrong all I have to do is print a couple of new parts. It's not like the end of the world. So I've put a, a dab of the weld on number 16 down inside the hole there. And I'm going to 
going to push this on to the end of that shaft. So you can see when this arm out here is basically straight up and down on the inside, I've got that angled forward. Because it's a hex shaft, there's only so many choices. And that's kind of the position I'm remembering being right. Because there's going to be a lever that's going to push on that to raise and lower the arm. Okay. The uh, other arm should be set up enough for us to work with. I'm hoping. Looks like it is. And why not why not put it in the same position as the mechanical one? We kind of need to put these in now because it'd be very difficult to uh, get them in once we start installing the motor frame and all that kind of stuff. It gets kind of busy in there. I think I could could do the one with the lever after the fact, but I know I couldn't get this one in there after the fact. So let's just let's just do it now. If this doesn't work, then this will be a video of how not to do it, which can be just as important as uh, any of the videos, right? Okay, here's a peek at the motor that we're going to be using in the cam. So I got online and looking at the N20 type motors, I wanted a very small motor, but I wanted one that ran as slow as possible. I mean, if I could have got 20 to 30 seconds, that would have been perfect for the sit stand because then I could have put other cams in there and made things, other things move. As it is, I guess I'm, what do we got, about a 15 second run time? Let's, uh, let's bring this guy back down here and see. So anyway, like I say, I was trying to look for the motors that ran the slowest in that style. I wouldn't want it any faster than that. That looks good the way that is. And I found that uh, these ones with the right angle shaft came in all kinds of different speeds. And this particular one, I have it written down here somewhere. This particular one was being sold as a 12 volt 16 RPM. Now, because I'm not running on 12 volts, I'm going to be running on 6 volts in this one. And of course, remember the RPMs are based at no load. It's going to be slower on the load. So that means I'm actually getting, could get 8 RPM, no load. And um, the original one, the white robot there, which only has three AAA batteries, that's uh, four and a half volts. So that would be even slower. So that was about the slowest I could find in staying small and lightweight. And that's what you see working there. So I think that worked out okay. Like I said, if it had gone slower, I'd have been even happier, but that'll do. Well, there's this cam that we have to fit onto it. You can see this shaft it's called the D-shaft because it has a flat and this cam has a flat. And the cam also has a rotation arrow on it which is going to become important when we wire it up to the batteries. This cam has to rotate in a clockwise manner when you're looking at it from this side. Now to fit it onto the shaft I'm going to need to press it on and normally if I was out in the workshop I would use the vise and I'm here in the house, so I'm going to take these pliers and see if I can't can't possibly crush it down on there. We'll see. Try to get centered up with the shaft. So I'm applying equal pressure. There we go. It's going. Not bad. Not bad at all. A little bit further. A little bit more. Maybe even a little further yet. Okay. So I've got a little bit of shaft hanging out there, and I know it's not so tight that it's binding up on the end of the uh, the motor itself. Now I had tested this uh, this particular motor earlier and found that if I put positive on this side and negative on that side, that this would run on a clockwise manner. 
and that's something that we'll have to address very very shortly here maybe even now this depends how how much further I go with this part of the build I'm going to run those two power wires that we have from part one coming up from part one through those holes solder them onto the motor and then this motor is going to press into this frame it's going to go all the way back in there now this frame prints in this direction and I did use supports which bust out to keep this cavity area um, square and clean now obviously because these has exposed gears you're going to want to make sure that there aren't any little bits and pieces that can possibly break loose in there and get into those gears later because it'll just jam everything up so you're going to want to make sure that that's really clean now we don't know the length of the wire that we actually need to do this but it's not important uh, and that'll become clear later why it's not important that we worry about if it's too long too short would be a problem but too long not a problem I think I'm gonna go ahead and pass the wires up through this part of the body again I haven't built one in this uh, in this order yet this is actually the first one so basically I'm pretending like I know what I'm doing but I don't we're figuring this out together um, one thing that I haven't prepped was my soldering gun. It would have been nice if I had that pre-warmed up. But this heats up pretty quick. We should be able to think of something to talk about while we're waiting for the pencil to warm up. So I'm going to pass those wires through those holes. And in the case of this, green is ground. So I'm going to run that back here. And this orange is positive. Leastwise, that's the way I set it up down below then as soon as that uh, soldering pencil heats up we'll solder these wires onto the motor and then we'll actually turn it on and make sure it's running the right direction because now's a good time to flip the wires around if it's not it's getting warm I should have been thinking ahead and had this uh, this guy all plugged in and ready to go Uh, hit the switch back here okay it is running the right direction so I remembered right so you can see the little arrow is making it clear which directions this thing should be should be going where do I want to stop it in the down position or the up position I think in the up position maybe okay so uh, how much of this would get on camera or if maybe I should zoom in a little bit but I'm getting ready to shove this into its little enclosure now it should fit very snugly and looking for something push this bottom corner down in so I know it's all the way in there we go okay the reason I didn't really care how long these wires were right now is we're going to take any excess wire and loop it up through up into the head and that way we can tap into it to run the LED lights so if there's a whole bunch of extra here right now I don't really care it's not going to be an issue 
It'd be an issue if the wires were too short, but it isn't really an issue if they're too long. Now I'm trying to think. I think maybe setting this in here now is a good idea. Like so. And I suppose we'll have to fuss with those wires to some extent trying to fish everything together here. But let's just pull that around. And we've got these parts here that we need to work into the lower leg slots. I wonder if I should zoom in a little bit here. Hopefully this won't be a mistake. So let's take let's take one of those leg parts and get it in there. Let's tuck the other one in. As you can see I'm going into this thing sideways. Trying to get those parts up around. Here we go. I got to get this mess of a leg. There we go. Things are coming together now. So now you have to cut a long axle. And this axle is going to go from one side of the body to the other and pass through that uh, frame that's holding the motor. And it's also going to pass through the uh, rear leg parts. In the land of millimeters, that looks like about 50. 57 millimeters maybe in the land of inches I would call that two and a quarter so maybe 57 58 millimeters two and a quarter inches long again in my particular case this is a eighth inch rod it's actually just old soft steel welding rod you could use brass rod you could use aluminum whatever you got around um, if you're a metric person, the uh, eighth inch equates to about 3.12 millimeters. So probably a three millimeter rod would work. We're going to go through the uh, rear hole here and catch the cosmetic plate. The rear leg, cosmetic plate, and then catch the motor. And then we're going to catch the next leg this is all going to come clear here once I get this pin in because I'll be able to stop and show you where we're at there we go oh, what did I do with the needle nose here they are might be easier with with some pliers on here Open that through all right so you can see the rod is pushed all the way in there and inside it has basically gone through this cosmetic outer part into the main leg part. This is the pulley one that has the uh, pull string on it. Through the cosmetic part then it passes through the motor mount. This is the motor mount that we just put the motor on. Then on the other side you just keep going. Pass through the motor mount, cosmetic, leg pivot cosmetic and back through the body and that gives us one of our pivot points right there and it's going to kind of help hold things together here for for the next few steps now I'm going to try and fish these wires up through the neck hole to keep them out of the way while we continue the build got the green one Let's see if I can get the orange one to come up there the orange one. And the question is, is where's the best place for those wires to go right now? And I actually don't know the answer to that because we're going to be putting some pins in here next for the the front knee one. I think I believe these are the ones that I cut for the front knee one. We're going to put one of these in we'll see how it looks. Um, I've cut this one inch long and one inch is just about 25 millimeters of the eighth inch rod and we're going to go into this center hole and it's going to come through and basically I'm pinning right through the front part of that leg and it's going to go right up into the 
motor frame if we're lucky. And it shouldn't be able to push through the frame because the frame's hole is set to stop it. Okay, so we have one side set up. We're going to set the other side up. What I'm contemplating right now is whether I should force the two wires to the front side to keep them out of the back. I kind of think I do want to do that. I think it might be better if they're if I know that they're out of harm's way. I haven't decided what the right tool for doing that would be. <laughs> and once you do it, how do you convince them to stay there? But we'll find out. All right, I'm going to try and pin this this other side here. Going into that center hole. As you can see the rod is just starting to pass through right there, see it in the middle? It's going to go into the motor mount. There we go. Push that on in. The uh, motor frame should stay centered with the body through all this. Hopefully. Alright, looks like the wire stayed to the front of the body, out of the back, out of view. And so far those springs have enough power to, uh, to lift the body up, which is what we were after. So, what's going to make those go up and down on the motor as well? Got another shaft. We've got a little idler wheel we're going to install. And the shaft. And this time the shaft has been cut. Looks like about 45 millimeters long or one and three quarter inches long, depending on where you live in the world. And it provided a hole for inserting this in. Once it's in, you don't want it sticking back out of the hole, but it's going to go into the top part of the legs. As you can see right there, see the shaft moving? Before I push it all the way through to the other side, that's when we stick the idler wheel in there. And I don't know how hard or easy this is going to be because I didn't assemble the prototype one in this order. There we go. wasn't hard at all. So I've got the little idler wheel in there. I'm going to continue passing the rod through to the other side like so. I need something to push on this with because I don't want the rod left in the body. This part has to be able to move independent. Oop, I think I pushed it a little bit too far, but we may be okay. So if the rod is in, went through this leg, went through the roller, and then went into the other leg, that's the general idea. And if it's not touching the body, then this whole part should be able to move. And that's when this cam comes around, it's going to push on that roller, and that's what's going to make the robot sit. Now, what's going to keep that rod in place, you may be thinking. I know I was thinking when I designed it. And that's why I left these cutaway places right here and right here. Because then I can dab in a little bit of glue on, it doesn't have, even have to be both of them, on one of them or the other or right here, to keep that rod from ever moving. Because if that rod were to shift all the way over to one side and get stuck in a hole, that's going to jam everything up big time which you don't want. I think the rod is in a good position. I don't see it protruding too much on either side. In my case, my uh, glue of choice is E6000. When I'm uh, gluing dissimilar materials together, like 
metal to plastic. Nice thing about the E6000 is it won't ever let loose on its own, but if you ever have to remove it, you can. It's, it's basically a lot like a silicone in that it's stretchy and rubbery. But it has a lot of differences that are better than silicone. You can paint it and work with it. So I dabbed a little bit on the end of that shaft right there. And once that sets up, then I don't really need to worry about that rod moving or going anywhere. And if you wanted, you could dab the other side as well. Just putting a little bit between the rod and, and the plastic. And that's going to secure that. Now we don't know if we need to adjust the springs or add counterweight or anything like that yet. But it'd be interesting just to see what the motor does at this point, if it's able to make it sit. And it looks like it is. And it made it all the way down. So you can see this function in here. So that comb comes around, causes it to sit. Coming back up. So the next bit of business um, is to get that arm to move. We've got to get that linkage in there. Let's we'll see if we can fish this in there. This piece prints flat on your printer like that, no supports. And uh, you're going to have to have a rod for it as well. I believe it's the same length as that lower one because it goes full body to body. So this uh, eighth inch rod is two and a quarter inches long, which had us in about the 58 millimeter length thereabouts. And this piece, how the heck did this piece go in? I gotta think about this for a second. All right, so this edge rides on the cam I think it might be easier to put this in if the robot is in a sitting position. So let's do that. Because that's going to give me more room to try to insert this device in here. These wires are already trying to get in the way. Dumb wires. Well, that wasn't bad to put in. And there's a hole right up here. Well, we're going to work this piece through. Trying to see how everything looks before we get too far. I guess we need to put that axle in all the way. For some reason I'm having trouble putting the axle in all the way. There we go. I guess I was fighting the arm. In the end what I'm going to do is push the axle out a little bit, put a little bit of that E6000 on the outside of the axle and then push it in flush to hold it in place so that it can't move. But before we do that, we kind of need to make sure that all of this stuff's going to work. So you can see when this cam comes around, it's going to push on the bottom of this, and that's going to make the arm move, if we're lucky. So let's find out. All right. Not bad. So, let's do what I said I was going to do. Let's... Which side do I want to poke it out? Don't know. There it is. I don't actually just need a little something to tack that on. The rod doesn't gonna wanna move, but you certainly wouldn't want it coming out unexpectedly. A little something to gum it up to 
keep it from uh, ever thinking about moving outward on its own. Like so. That should be, that should work. Okay. Well, you know, I think that may be enough for this part of the build. The next part of the build, we can move on to the head and the LED wiring and all that good kind of stuff. Of course, the other arm is free swinging. You could position it wherever you want. But if you're interested in seeing the innards working, then this is a good time. It's very quiet, which is also nice. It's a little bit jerky. I don't know if a little lube would help that or not. I don't, uh, I don't remember the white one being jerky. Yeah, it's a little bit jerky too. Kind of just makes it more like the real thing though, doesn't it? So in the next video, part of the video, we'll do the head, which has the uh, moving mouth, the lid eyes, and we'll uh, get that part all built up. We'll see how the springs are doing by the time we added the weight of the head and everything. If we need to adjust them, I've got some ways that we can uh, add a little bit more pull to them if we need to. But, there you go.